pushing the button. Everything is real. It's really happening. Gertrude, <laughs> Gertrude's excited. Gertrude? Gertrude's yeah. excited. I know Gertrude. Hi. Huh. Get all this stuff right here. What's Ooh. up? Hey. Welcome back. It's Tuesday, August 16th, 2022. My name is Jay Ryan. We have got the late night playset for you tonight. The Cars and Coffee Show. Cars and Comedy Show? What's the name of this show? We're, we're in the middle of a rebrand. Um, actually, uh, we might talk about that a little bit tonight, as a matter of fact. But uh, other than that, the exciting thing is we've got comedian Dean Del Rey here. And for a Cars and Comedy Show, he's not just comedy. He's into the same kind of cars we are, too. So uh, we'll probably talk quite a bit about that, I'm guessing. And he brought Gertrude, which is even cooler. You guys see that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. We're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Letterman podcast. Tom Bones Malone was on the other day. Uh, we might do some, uh, some other stuff. We're going to definitely be talking about cars at the Marconi and, uh, and maybe a scratcher ticket. There's a lot of stuff on this card. I have been in the car with Adam Ferrara all day. We were in traffic for about six hours, so my brain is absolutely fried. <laughs> <laughs> so in that case, I think we will just say, who's on Instagram over here? Oh, I don't know, the Den of Geek. Oh, Brian Volk, quite well, we love him. How about you, Canadian Mike up there? How you doing, fella? Uh, I'm good. I'm a little flustered right now because I am in the process of changing iPhones, and uh, it wasn't quite finished, so I'm not in the Instagram, but I will be momentarily. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry about a thing, buddy. I wouldn't worry about a thing. We are winging this one, uh, but Will... Will, now is the time for Will to start it off, but you got two minutes to go grab a drink or a bathroom break or whatever. Firing it off right now. Late Night Play Set, Cars and Comedy Show starts now. Fair. We haven't even said two words to them, and then we're yeah. already dumping both, so I just, uh, we're not doing that at the moment. But, 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 we're joining the live right now, and here we are, everybody. Welcome back. Again, it's uh, it's flying card day, and Letterman isn't even here. 486. This is the 486th sucker of these that we've done Tuesday, August 16th, 2022. <laughs> Our guest is Dean Del Rey. First thing he asked when he came in here is, how long did it take to do all this? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Well, here it's it's funny because I do my podcast, you know, and I'm like, whoa, this is a, I mean, I would like to have this, but I would want somebody else to build it you know, and run it. 
do you do yours out of your place too? I do, yeah. Oh, so is is that is the best and the worst thing ever? Well, uh, I mean, it is the best. I don't have any worst about oh, it. It's good. just um, I wish somebody was operating it all. You know. Are you like us where you do it all yourself? Yeah. It's a fucking For 11 lot years. of work. 11 years, dude. Oh, my 660 gosh. 660 episodes. Do you do video, too? I, I I do it if it's on Zoom. Okay. You know, but I can't do... People are like, it's too much. you got to be doing video, too. I go, hey, man, remember when it was supposed to be a podcast? <laughs> you know, audio yeah. while you're at the fucking gym or, you know, commuting to your job. Now people want a TV show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Multicam. Free. I want it free. <laughs> yeah. Well, Spotify is uh, supposed to pay for it, right? Oh, yeah. I think that's the idea. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, uh, 11 I, years on your podcast? 11 years. 660 episodes. Just had Gene Simmons today. Congratulations. Yeah, have Kiss, yeah. Is, was it the first time he was on, or I feel like he first would have been lower on your list? No, he was a uh, top, top five guest when I first uh, was putting together the Dream Guest 11 years ago. Because he was the one that got me into music when I was a kid. Is that right? So I was like, yeah, I got to talk to the guy that kicked it all off. And it didn't happen for 11 years. I got <laughs> Don't Paul say Stanley. that. We're I, trying to get Letterman here. Don't say yeah. that. Uh, how, uh, where did you grow up that you were into kids? In the Bay Area. So oh, I was a sure. uh, you know, heavy uh, concert guy. I went to see every, everybody, you know. Yeah. Everybody at the Cow Palace. Well, and, but everybody came to you, right? Yeah, that was great, you know. Oh, man. So you, if you were exposed to all that stuff, what was it about Kiss then? Well, when you're a kid, it's the first thing, you know, like I'm rocking Partridge Family and, and oh, I see. Don McLean and AM radio. <laughs> and then, you know, you're in the store one day and you see Kiss Alive. I saw Kiss Alive too, and there was Gene Simmons with blood and 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 makeup. I was like, what is that? What am I looking at? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and then I just uh, went to see him and it was game over. That's hilarious. Yeah. It's like Fangoria magazine for me. The first time I saw whatever that was, yeah. I was like, what the hell? More. Uh, so Kiss got you into music, and then how into music are you? Oh, dude, it's I like, saw, <laughs> when, yeah, yeah. All right, I found you. All right, so th the backstory for everybody. Yeah. I'm at TLG with Yellow Car, right, and whatever, and he gets off the phone with somebody or something, and he says something about you comedians. And I was like, I figured it was probably Segura or Bert or something because he's part of the race team there. And he's like, oh, no, do you know who Dean Del Rey is? And he, it wasn't anything bad, by the way. He was joking. Cause yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this son of a bitch. No. Uh, and I said, uh, no, the name sounds familiar. Whatever. I looked you up and I saw the Conan spot. And I knew I had seen that before. <laughs> but all this to track back to, I didn't actually know much about you. So when I'm Googling, I see him at the table with Christian James Hand, our friend, in the studio, the Smoking Tire Studio, which I built. For, yeah. for Matt Farah. And I was like, wait a second. These worlds are colliding. You got to get in here. So that's why it happened so quickly. But oh, I don't great. know that much about you. Oh, yeah. Other than you must be into music if you were with Christian James Hand. Well, I, was, I played music 25 years. And then uh, it, it kind of ran its course. And then I started working a job at Harley Davidson. I was selling motorcycles. I was like, I got to do something, you know. <laughs> It's, yeah. weird. it's weird when you go in with a job app and they're like, there's no work history here for 25 years. Where were you? Prison? And they're like, oh, no, I was uh, playing music. Kind of the same. <laughs> but um, I uh, was, you know, I was working at this Harley dealer and uh, long story short, the Tarantino people came in one day, asked me to uh, advise them on a biker movie that they were making in the Grindhouse uh, series called Hell Ride with Larry Bishop and uh, Dennis Hopper and uh, Michael Madsen. And I, I ended up landing a role in this thing. And from there, I landed a role in this Ice Cube movie called uh, The Long Shots. And that's where I met three comedians, Earthquake, Garrett Morris, and Michael Collier. And it was, I was 43 years old, and I said, man, I always wanted to try comedy. And they were laughing, like, get out of here. You're too old. But after a couple months There's of being no on the thing. set. Huh? There's no such thing. Well, you know, when you're a comedian all your life, like, I was, I was naive. I thought, well, I looked at people like uh, Bill Burr and Mary, and they're like my age. So, yeah, I'll just go do that. Go do that, yeah. I didn't know they'd been in the game 25 years. That's you right. know what I mean? They were young kids when yeah. they started. There's no such thing as an overnight success. Right. So... You know, um, after a few months, they realized I was riffing on the script and stuff. And Earthquake said, hey, I think you could probably do comedy. 
get home and just hit some open mics and that was uh over five thousand shows ago holy shit yeah coming up on 13 years Earthquake. I used to work on Everybody Hates Chris. We had Earthquake on all the time. Yeah, he's brother. great. Hilarious dude. Great. And an awesome human being. And then you mentioned Garrett Morris. And I'll just say, that. I go to the same dentist at Garrett Morris. Right oh, around, yeah. Right around the corner from here. Oh, yeah. Well, Garrett Morris. <laughs> I worked on Saturday Night Live, too, so he's like royalty to me. Yeah. Oh, same here. I grew up. See, I wanted to do comedy as a kid, but there was no outlets like now. You got YouTube and comedy camps and all that shit. It was none of that. Yeah. When I was growing up, it was either construction or rock, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the comedians seemed like they were old dudes when I was growing up, but they weren't. They Suit just had well, no, stuff. like you know, Carl and here, but they had sideburns and oh. Cheech and Chong, but they looked old. But they were in the their twenties, yeah, you know, yeah. So yeah, then um, I met Garrett, and I I worshipped the first uh, you know cast of SNL for sure. You know, Belushi and and Bill Murray was a god to me. Yeah, uh, Caddyshack. All of it. All of that. And I was... I was Busters. He wrote Dave on the front of his desk the first night. Yeah, I was I was obsessed with comedy and I went and saw a lot of comedy growing up. And I grew up in the Bay Area, so in San Francisco they had the huge uh, San Francisco comedy uh, competition that was a big deal. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of the first wave of comedy. There's a lot more oh, okay. now. Sorry, Nicole used to be a, uh, she used to do personal PR, but she rep mainly comedians. So she oh, worked yeah. with everyone from Chris Rock to freaking everybody. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean. So she knows a lot of these festivals and stuff that you're talking about. I used to, I used to go see Chris Rock and then later I opened for him and yeah. Seinfeld. And, uh, you know, I've, I've worked with all the people I used to see. Uh, when I was good. Oh, especially when you're too old to get into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean. <laughs> I understand. Uh, I mean, once I got into it, I was like, "Oh, I get it." There's ageism in Hollywood with with uh, dudes too. Sure. <laughs> you know, I didn't think that it was uh, going to be a problem, which I'm kind of glad I didn't know. I went in naive mm-hmm. and just hit the ground running, and uh, and I don't think I would have uh, been detoured anyway if they were like, "Hey, it's not going to happen." No, and I know what you mean though. There's an advantage to not knowing what you don't know. Yeah, totally. Like there's totally. a weird advantage to being naive yeah <laughs> also i had found this second coming in life like i was like oh my god this is really what i should have been doing my whole life well how forgive the question how successful were you in music like were you playing out to audiences where you got all that feeling and you're then replicating it now through comedy or well yeah i, I mean i had records out i toured uh, for I, I mean it was funny i was doing radio uh about six months ago i did radio in the morning for shows and the dj came on he goes uh you know, he's a failed musician and now a successful, oh! successful comedian. And I'm I was not like, implying that, but I, I perhaps. Right. No, but I mean, what people don't understand is they put a, a monetary, uh, you know, the status is oh. by, by monetary or fame. But if you do anything for 25 years for a living, you've made it. Yeah. In my eyes, you know what I mean? You're I like, do agree. And, and sometimes that's a better level to be at where you can just keep working. You never go way up and you never go way down. You know, you just wins the race, bro. Yeah, man. And I've, you know, I, I've, I've done gigs with everyone, you know, toured all over and uh, had records out. So it was, uh, it was great. But, uh, you know, the feeling I get from comedy is a million times, uh, you know, it's just different. Do you know what the reason is? Have you tracked all that out? Like, is it because you're the one guy up there alone? It's all it, yours? Or? Well, when you're with a band, you got, you know, you're going to have, unless you're like you 2 or certain guys where all four people are in, like Metallica, or where it's each dude. A proper ensemble. It, oh, no, it's just there. Each guy is carrying their weight. Mm-hmm. When you are at a, a, a medium level, you know there's some loose. Sure. You know, there's dudes that aren't really pulling Almost their weight. Almost Famous covers that so well. Right, with the right, right. Yeah. So, but you're just carrying them because you want to keep it going. With comedy, the amount of drive I have is if I had four of me in a band, we would have been the biggest band in the world. Right know? on. Okay. Yeah. You know? So Yeah, so it is kind of similar then. It is kind of like, well, I'm working for it, so I'm the only guy out here. It's just, right. it's, yeah. It's all kind of funneled down. It's... It's uh, it's it, it's an interesting animal too. To uh, a lot of people say, well, you kind of had like a, a head start in comedy because you played music. 
And I'm like, it's, there's nothing the same except for the microphone and the lights. That's yeah, it. Venue, yeah, right. There's right. zero the same. You got to write jokes, which is so fucking hard. You could write a song and you just kind of repeat, like, oh, the third verse is the same as the first. Yeah. And you're We're always, in the groove. Yeah, and I you're can do this one again. <laughs> and you're only talking, you're only singing little bits. Where comedy, you're talking for an hour. Yeah. You know, with songs, you know, you know, oh, I love you, oh yeah, oh, uh, you know, and then and then a chorus, and then some playing. It's uh, it's crazy. Also, I feel like you know, you're on you're on a ride. Uh, there's a song going, so like there's a beginning, middle, when you're uh, everything's real time, present, right now, oh, yeah. when it's just you on stage with a microphone. They're just there, staring at you. Yeah. And and and, uh, and I'm on at the comedy store every night. It, amongst some of the greatest ever you know you got yeah. like burr you got mary you got sebastian you got ali wong uh you, you know these people are massive massive stars uh you know when i first started i was going on in between like daniel tosh uh and he's one of the greats you know mm -hmm. and uh his show was huge at the time and i'm going on between like him and say Sebastian or something, and you just yeah. and you're just kind of like, <laughs> you know, people are like, who's this guy? <laughs> so you got to be extra good. It's like the eight thirty on uh, on Thursday night slot in the in the nineties yep. on Saturday, on uh, NBC. It's like, it was like you had your Cheers and your Seinfeld, yeah. but it, whatever was in the middle, it didn't really matter if it was Caroline in the City or what. Well, no, it matters because they're standing there looking at you like, yep. I don't know this fucking guy. Oh, I totally agree. I'm sorry. Yeah, I you're going sandwich. Uh, yeah, the but you're going on in between two killers and well-known people and then they're calling you up you know they used to talk about in the old days and all the documentaries they talk about it about uh, people uh, in the 70s following prior at the store because right. he would go out there and just crush that yeah. people would have nothing left to give yeah and then the comedy stylings of so and so you know uh, i can't even imagine but it's got to be the same exact thing that what you're talking about it's got to be that same feeling yeah i mean uh, i mean Here's the thing. If you're passed at the comedy store, you pretty much have enough, you know, hopefully knowledge and skills to be able to go on after or before or in the middle, anywhere in the lineup. That's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. um, everybody in the audience has a different comedy taste. That's why there's 15 comics a night or 12 comics a night. Yeah. Not everybody's going to love each comic on the lineup. So you just find your bits and your voice and you're going to get the people that dig what you're doing. And then there's the people that love the big star because that's the, you know, and then there's just people like prior that are just fucking murderers and you sit back and you watch that and you learn from the greats. And that's what I did at the comedy store every night till two in the morning. I'd sit in the back and just watch these incredible comedians were you already performing at that point but you were just observing at the comedy store having not passed there yet or were you like already a comedian you were already going up places i, I was going up places but i wasn't past there but i would go all around town and do spots and then finish my night at the uh -huh. store in the back just watching and studying these guys because i was like well this is a fucking free clinic you know, why wouldn't I be here every night? So I'd go do my work. I wouldn't sit at the store until I at least done three, two, three spots. Great. And then go there and just start learning everything, how they bring each other up, their credits, the light on the side, the blue star, how long the sets are, how to reset a room, you mm -hmm. know, all kinds of, how to deal with hecklers, everything so I was just learning. you were doing the logistics and the just whole. Just everything. Yeah. Is that how you were able to then reset like a podcast at your house? Did you have the know all? I mean, you knew your way around microphones and shit through the music business and whatever. But I don't know. This was an undertaking for me to figure out. Oh, I, <laughs> and, I, and I worked in television in production. I learned the podcast from two things. Ari Shafir, he just came, he said, Come over one day, I'll show you. Oh, what, what he's got? What, yeah. And I iPhone videoed it. And he went, You just plug these in here. And then you check, check, and then press this and get a uh, Zoom H4N. And then you just say, and then I was like, uh, okay. And he's like, all right, I got to go. <laughs> and then I just trial by fire for like three months. Yeah. Put one out. Oh, I fucking lost it. 
oh shit oh, yeah. or, or oh the, the volumes are terrible or whatever and then i would youtube is i don't even know how schools are open anymore i'm like <laughs> what what are we doing with schools I know. we can wipe out school shooters right away by not having school I do. just youtube <laughs> and the internet you know what i mean i yeah. mean it's unreal i learned anything, how to do shit on the car anything i need to know you know i go right on youtube how do i you know broil uh, a steak anything you know just <laughs> anything it's anything what did we do before it what's that I, when youtube first came out i remember it was just people doing dancing in their fucking dining room yeah. and the star wars kid and all that stuff and you know and then i guess we all started doing shows and whatever but uh, whatever i guess that's too big of a I guess youtube is everything now youtube is what television you, used to be youtube the is the best Someone said that to me one time when it was like, I was just go online and look at anything I wanted to yeah. know, and I do it. Yeah, and Absolutely. you don't need television anymore. In no, way. yeah, YouTube is uh, meanwhile, I'm like research and go to the library. Like, this is how you do it. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's old school. You're gonna check out a book, yeah. Um, that's how I think. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Too. It's it's, it's uh, will hunting, right? You can spend two hundred fifty thousand dollars on the education, or you can go to the public library. Yeah, it's all good. You yeah. get your information however you want to get it. Uh, do you have like any kind of YouTube presence? Do you have like a channel or a show? Yeah, Dean D- Dean Del Rey. It's on there. I got a. Uh, but I is think it your it, podcast, or you do like your own comedy videos and stuff? I there's some comedy videos up there, and uh, uh, all the podcast uh, oh, audio yeah. and some video. Yeah, this. Uh, I think it's. Uh, Right now, like uh, maybe 11,000 subscribers or something. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm trying to get it bigger though, you know. Just, <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. You know. it's, what's the name of the podcast? Let There Be Talk? Yeah, Let There Be Talk. And then I have a second podcast called The Grail where I interview people that make stuff that work outside the box, like artisans and makers. Yeah. You know, people that make like... Uh, denim or boots or home stereos or guitars or real craftsmen yeah yeah and it's a lot of younger people that were basically like no nah, man i'm gonna work for myself and took a chance on their uh on their dream and uh, so that's i so i feature them yeah it's great so I, I started a podcast network during covid and i uh, have these uh shows and um were and, they all you or were they some of your friends like how they're me you know one is the one where i interview people uh in the music and comedy and movie world and the other one is the makers and you know the wow. grill and there, it's all on cactusradionetwork.com and that's your podcast yeah network. cactus radio network it's hilarious we're in the process of building a podcast network oh yeah i mean i guess everybody is probably yeah. but well i think it's the best way to go because um I think eventually people are going to, like Hulu and Netflix and, and, and all of these uh, streaming platforms are going to need content other than just video. They're going to need like a podcast network. So they're going to need to license stuff. And I've got years of shows that are evergreen. They're not like uh, promo junkets. They're right. body of work. <laughs> right. With people talking, uh, interviewing some of the biggest people like John Mayer and ACDC and uh, Josh Homme, Queens of the Stone Age. and You know, really uh, cool people that don't do a lot of interviews in a long form. These are like hour to three hours. Yeah, and you get them to sit down with you. Three hours? Yeah, sometimes. Holy shit. Yeah, in the early days, I used to just go and go, you know? Yeah, I do. But, yeah. I mean, I'd have probably two bathroom breaks in a three-hour show. Gee whiz. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. I agree with you. I keep saying the same thing as far as, uh, I, f- I feel like <laughs> everyone's got, everybody's got a podcast. I'm like, yeah, but they're not going to turn the thing off. It's only going to get more and more. So g- you may oh, as well man. jump on the damn ship for God's sake. I'm grateful yeah. we started this f- four years ago or whatever, just to have gotten to this point. Yeah. Uh, I was with Adam Ferrara all day. He's been doing his for years and years and years too. And because of that, he's got a following. Yeah. Um, Smoke and tire. Yeah, 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 huge but, huge. but he even told me he's like the first five, bro. First five years, we didn't make a dime. Right, and I was like, wow, that's crazy. He's like, and then you make some money, and then you make a lot of money. I was like, right. okay, <laughs> yeah, Stick with it. I right. had him on the show. Oh, he, Matt's great. Yeah, yeah. We just sent him a video. We took a video of him in the DeLorean down there because he loves DeLoreans. Fun. Adam's like, hey, do a video for Farah. Um, uh, but how do you know Christian James Hand? How did you get set up with there? Because he's one of my favorite favorite interesting weirdo people oh he reached out to me because i had john mayer on the podcast 
And then he, John Mayer, went a couple times had him do like uh, break down some tracks yeah. w- with a group of friends like me, John Mayer, and uh, and uh, who else was there? It was like, you know, some producers and friends of John's, like a private uh, breakdown of uh, a Talking Heads song. And that's how I met him. Super cool. Yeah. Uh, he's the only buddy I've ever... Only person I've ever seen do anything even close to what he does. Right, the way he deconstructs music in in the coolest ways possible. It's, it sucks with all the licensing. Like, there's no way to really do it unless you have cooperation from every single person. Right. I'm so grateful he's as successful as he is at it because it's got to be. He's got to be up against a wall with all of those clearances. Oh yeah, yeah. Anytime it comes to music, I mean, right. You know what are you gonna do? It's like you know you can't have him making money on you when the musicians aren't making money. Right. And it's just all about the big, the big brother up there of the record labels. Just like we need the money. Yeah. Well, is the band gonna get the money? No. <laughs> I mean, I just had Gene Simmons on. He was breaking it down, man. Oh, he was like, you know, the musicians get like a, a penny for a billion streams, or you know, it's just a crazy money. It's not that, but he was saying, he's like, there's a minimum wage for you know people's jobs, and there's uh, you know income structures for everybody but musicians and he compared it to like if you went to ralph's and everything was just a penny yeah, the ralph's would be out of business yeah. in in a month i mean that's a pretty good analogy yeah real quick. you know it's just like hey wait a penny you know yeah so it's a uh, pretty wild to think about or if you order online you just don't pay at all you just steal it online i was like if, I, if i'm not gonna make money playing music i might as well do comedy <laughs> and really, you know, do some, you know, something that I've always wanted to do. Well, you look at was it was it was it Louis or actually it might have been you and Jim Gaffigan who sold their special themselves first? They 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 uh, yeah Louis five bucks it, yeah. yeah. And then you think to yourself like, there's people who won't pay ten bucks for your album, but they'll go buy your comedy special off of the internet for five bucks or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, it's like. I think somehow the genie got out of the bottle and then it never got back in. But uh, I always say if you took music away for one month from the entire world, they would be ready to pay. Oh, that's You're just sitting around here in your own thoughts in your head. That's kind of beautiful, actually. <laughs> I know. But it would take every musician to get on board. Can you imagine? Like, nope. No, no streaming. I'm taking my stuff off streaming. I'm not playing live. Nothing. No. It'd be crazy. There's a killer reggae song called Life, Life Without Music. Uh, Brew plays it all the time in the House of Vibe All-Stars. At Fair's birthday party, as a matter of fact. Speak of the... Speak of the yeah. Were you at that? No. Oh, was it, go to the next one. <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm on the road <laughs> a lot. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. You probably are all the time. Yeah. What, yeah. What's, your, what's your schedule like? I mean, are you doing I'm like... About, I'm about to start a 38-day tour with Marcus King. We're doing a rock comedy tour. Marcus no King, shit. one of the greatest uh, up-and-coming uh, singer-songwriter, guitar players. Hey, this guy's insane. So we're about to go across the country, 38 days. It's like two nights at the Beacon, two at the Wheel Turn, two oh, at the Ryman. On. Yeah, great, great videos. At the, at the old Ryman or the yeah. new Ryman in the mall? No, no, no. They, the, they don't have a new Ryman. There's a new Ryman. We're talking Nashville, right? Yeah, yeah. I went to, When I was there in the 90s, I went to the old Ryman Auditorium where they really used to do the yeah, Grand Ole Yeah, that's Ole the same Opry. one, yeah. Oh, okay. Then they moved the Grand Ole Opry or something to some other place and they were doing it somewhere. Maybe that's what No, it was. I think it was... Because uh, the Ryman used to be a church, right? Yeah, I think it was messed up during a flood or something. Oh, okay. Or I don't know, something might have happened to it. I don't know. That makes sense, the flood. But yeah, I've done the Ryman before with Bill Burr and Dude, it's that room's a, it's that's epic. spiritual, yeah. Oh, man, yeah. What's and then it like I'm, to do I'm, comedy in that? room it's great you're just doing you know dick jokes in this uh you know it's probably iconic. better for comedy than music because like it's pews it's wooden church pews yeah. so like it's not really that comfortable to like kick back and watch but if you're sitting there watching a comedy show it's kind of great yeah. for comedy because then yeah. people are awake it's great it's, it's great everyone paying attention i did it with burr I, i'm on an arena tour right now with burr also uh on and off for this whole year i've been doing it we just we just did Red Rocks, and he uh, released it live at Red Rocks that on was Netflix. That's a great show. Oh yeah, that was it. Was, it was uh, Red Rocks and the L.A. Forum. I did both with Burr. The probably the greatest nights of my life. Dude, that's awesome. Just crazy, you know. At fifty-five, we're <laughs> <you know, laughs> good 56 for you. Fifty-six years old. Yeah. Well, better now than when you were twenty-something. Totally. Oh, um, yeah. do, do, are you a sports guy at all? 
Not really. Oh, good. Me yeah. neither. Yeah. But people love the forum because of the Lakers and the. Oh yeah, shit. well, I, I did love the Lakers when I, I loved sports when I was growing up. It was something you'd watch hungover. You know what I mean? You just like, uh, <laughs> you just like I no, thought... no brainer. You just laying around like, oh yeah. <laughs> Don't change the channel. All right, yeah. I get that. <laughs> I'm not a sports guy at all. Yeah. I mean, can you tell? What a nerd. Uh, uh, so what? The, I don't understand how you. you like, is it? How did you get so successful at comedy so quickly? Was it because you already were used to the grind from music? No, I fucking. You it, just worked it, your ass. I off? worked my ass off. I've done over so, five thousand shows. But that's in, like that's uh, like insane. It is, but you've but in how long? In a, uh, coming on thirteen years now. That is pretty. So yeah, that's you add it up, man. I'm doing 500 a, lot, a, a year. Yeah, it's like, and I it's all I did. It was nothing. No video games. No partying. No, no nothing. Straight up comedy. Just you know, I don't have kids. I've never been married or anything. So it was just focus. What was it when you were a kid that drew you to? Even though you didn't follow it, because I feel this is a lot of parallels with me. I yeah. fucking didn't follow my path until whatever this is. Uh, what what was it when you were a kid that drew you to the comedy, even though you didn't pursue it at the time? Oh, well, I, I mean, when I was growing up, rock and comedy were the same. That's why we're doing this rock comedy tour. You'd be at a party and someone would put on ACDC, and then they'd put on George Carlin. Okay. Then they'd put on Earth, Wind & Fire, and then they'd put on Cheech & Chong, and then, you know, Richard Pryor. It was the same. It, they were in the same... Same culture. Yeah, man, and and... And the comedians, like right now, they're, the comedians back then were radical. They were like outsiders and you know rock and rollers, and it was it was a it was a real danger to it too back then because there was a drug culture going on, and they were pretty free, loose talking about mm. that, and you never heard anybody talk about drugs. You know, taking drugs like Cheech and Chong and, and Richard Pryor. You're just yeah. like, this is crazy. You know, when you're young yeah. in the '70s. It was, uh, it was just, I just love the danger of it. And I still love the danger of it. I, I love that at any second it could go completely off the rails. Yeah. And it's the last form of entertainment other than uh, Broadway plays where people aren't just having their phone out like this. You know, concerts are over, it's man. Over, it's yeah. like there's no, you know, I watched Rage Against the Machine this week at uh, uh, Madison Square Garden. I was watching it online. And most of the people there were super engaged, which is cool to see. But most concerts are just people holding up a phone, yeah. which I don't get. So the last thing we did was something at the bowl, and it was all of that till the point where eventually I just did it too because I was like, well, "Oh yeah, I'm yeah. not going to beat just, this yeah. crowd. What the? F I may as well get some cool Instagram shit too." Yeah, right. Everybody's just trying to get the likes. Yeah, I feel and it's like also it showing was. off too. Like I'm here and you're not for sure. Look at How's me, FOMO, bitches. Yeah, I yeah. I don't understand. <laughs> I'm too old for that shit. <laughs> uh, all right, so cars too. Now oh. I get, I'm sensing a pattern here because like all Big the things car, you're yeah. into are very technical. The music, the comedy, all technical. Yeah. Cars too. Big car. Uh, TLG obviously. So I'm guessing Porsche. Oh yeah, only. I mean, uh, when I was growing up, to me it was James Bond. Oh, exotic nice. cars, amazing watches, crazy traveling and I, I, everything about me was that it was yeah. just oh the exotic bond. locations love it you know rosignol skis and <laughs> yeah. <the> swiss <laughs> alps was branded you're right <laughs> oh yeah but it was all the best shit i learned yeah. about the best shit from bond That's rolex true. big crown watch you know yeah. submariner uh lotus Esprints, uh aston martins and, and and you know exotic cars uh amazing uh fine clothing and everything I learned from Bond, but, you know, uh, early on, way into Ferrari, big time, Dino Ferraris, I and like uh, also the Magnum PI, 308s, three, you know, Matt's got one, the black one. But He just got it out of the shop just yesterday, and he's on his way up to, uh, up to Pebble now. Yeah. Right? But uh, RIP but, TC, but he... you mentioned Magnum, RIP TC. Did, yeah, I know. Just the other, that, killed, that gutted me. I don't know I why. Know. Didn't he uh, have that car running before? Yeah, and it was running great, and then he sent it back to the guy in the desert, and um, whatever, he did a, a lot of stuff to it, and apparently right. now it's like brand new. Yeah, so, you know, and then I got way into Mopar. I was I was driving- Oh, that's one way to the other. That's yeah, a I was, pendulum swing for you. Well, I loved Mopar, 
And, um, you know, I had a 69 uh, Roadrunner convertible. Dude. Yeah. R, R1, you know, the R uh, red. And then I had a B5 blue Super B 70. And... Uh, Trying to see if I got any video of me in the General Lee today with Adam. We were oh, down yeah. at a car museum. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I got into, I was into Cadillacs for a while. I had a 64. I had a uh, 68. Um, Big cars. And, yeah, and then I had a 70 with the 501 in the front. Front yeah. wheel drive, El oh, Dorado. Uh, it's a peach, yeah. Crazy. A top gear car. Crazy car. Yeah. But, yeah, but 911s are my life, pretty much. Yeah. Um, you know, At what point did that start throughout the car? Just, I, I remember uh, my sixth grade teacher, Miss Foster, which I, I wish I could find her now and ask her. She had a 78 Targa root beer brown. And she drove me and my buddy Jimmy Barchi home because she knew that we loved uh, crazy cars. She goes, I'll give yeah. you guys a ride. Come here, boys. I know you like crazy cars. <laughs> no, no, no. She was, <laughs> she was great, man. She, sure. I don't know how. I have positive memories of a teacher like that myself. I don't know how she got. Maybe her husband was rich because later on life you find out, like, teachers don't make shit, no, you know? No, yeah, not Porsche sellers. But she had it, and, you know, the smell of the interior, It's uh, they all smell the same. Mm -hmm. And then I went to the factory. Oh uh, yeah, and I was like, oh man, and then I just didn't, been in love with them ever since. Was that when you were on the road with music? Yeah. To, oh, yeah. badass. Yeah. Playing was, Germany, may yeah. as well hit Stuttgart. Oh, immediately went there. It was wild. Oh my god, that's yeah. so cool. I've just, never been to the factory. Oh, it's so cool to see that shit. You know. Supposedly they still make 911s in the same building they always have. Like, oh yeah. It's it, never not uh, been that one building. It's crazy, right? Yeah. I, that's what I love. I love I, that heritage. I love history and the heritage, mm -hmm. and I love uh, I love the new ones now too because the vintage ones, I, I, I've I've become a lunatic where I can't even have a good car anymore because yeah, I, I, I'm, feel like I just am so <laughs> fucking worried about it all the time that I can't do it. I don't know if I maybe if I had a level of Jay Leno money. Oh, that's different. I could drive one and not worry about door dings or someone texting and and hit me at the stoplight or you know and you lose all your value. Like oh, I don't yeah. have any money. It's all in this car. Yeah. That's how my life's always been. Totally. And everything I was telling Burr this. Everything I have is like a parachute. If something goes wrong, I look. I go. I can sell that and yeah. pay six months of rent. We're good to go. Isn't that yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the way you work in art, but I've drove myself crazy. So now if I get a uh some money, I would buy a nine nine two. And uh my favorite car, hands down, is the uh GT three touring. Mm -hmm. I don't like a fin. No. I can't stand a fin. <laughs> and I also fin. don't like the turbo cars with the ports on, over the rear tire. This is someone who shares my exact viewpoint. I on can't this stand car. that look. Me too. It's like bad shoulders back there. I think it's the worst design ever. Plastic. On what is the most beautiful design <laughs> ever. Yeah, that's why I go the uh, GT3 Touring, because there's no ports. I can't possibly agree with you more on this. Yeah, but I, nobody agrees with us. Everybody loves the big vent cutout. And I go, that's, that's when they stop liking turbos. It's gross, because it, it if you look, it gives it this weird shoulders mm -hmm. back there. Yeah, you're like, hey, buddy, you just want to relax. I hey, can't relax. stand that look, man. It looks like a bad design and uh gt3 man touring i don't like finn i like i like sleeper crazy fast and i've drove them all on the track i go to dream racing a lot sure i love the guys out there i've had them on the podcast cool. and i've drove Shout out to dream racers yeah i've drove every i drove uh everything out there you know 488 uh for a piece does uh the new 992 the gt3 the gt2 uh mclaren 710 I, I drove them all out there mm -hmm. and uh it's always porsche to me whenever Same. i get into that i go oh yeah this is just right I feel it fits right on me yeah too. and the ferraris are great but they feel a little safe and the porsche still feels like oh i mean i got that that gt2 got away from me oh, on the track so much power it also you, a little too much foot is that what happened no the way the gas is in the front and you come into the turn and you hammer the brake, 
the gas moves forward. Oh, you and, got a little slush. And momentum. then no, and then when you gas it, the ma- gas moves back. So then it just it sends the car into a weird motion. Oh, weird. You know, you gotta you gotta. It, it's a trick, man. I could see how people crash these cars because here I'm thinking I got traction control and everything. I'm good. I'm coming in at 180 miles Jeez. an hour into the turn there. Where? Yeah, straight up at Dream Race. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. On the long straight, and then you come in, it's the first left, you know, and then it's like, whoa, the car just starts going. You're Holy like, moments. oh, I'm screwed here, you know? 180 miles an hour. Yeah, man, that car is, you know, 170. Uh, I got it on video. <laughs> oh, I bet. It's fucking Do you know crazy. who Mark Brazil is? Who's that? He created that 70s show, but he used to stand up comedian as oh, well. Yeah? Uh, but he uh, was on the show once telling a story back in, when he had that 70s show on the air. There was a lot of money in Porsche collection, not just one, you know, the yeah. whole thing. And he told the story about how, you know, life was different back then. And he wrapped one around a, several trees over here, right off Riverside Drive on yeah. the way to Radford one day. Oh, yeah, man. And, the motor's over the back wheels. Yeah. And it was the older one 20 years ago, yeah, whatever the, that one was. So it was oh, even yeah. more. Less nannies, yeah. you know, more crazy. I love the old ones, uh, you know. I love the 80s. I like the, the you know, the G50 cars. Yeah, uh, me too. The, the 964s are great. Uh, I love those. But I'd rather have a new one now, and if someone hits it, I just get insurance and get another one. You yeah. know, where the other one, it's a, it's a, they're so expensive and cool and crazy now that it's like, I don't want someone to wreck this that's just not paying attention texting because they're all they're all one offs now like yeah. every single one is like a one off totally uh what what did you have that you sounds like you got rid of or you're getting rid of or yeah no, i i i had a uh 84 yep and uh it was 3.2 yeah black with the fin uh, you know tanned interior and then i had a 993 oh i love that one uh 95 the first year the first year so you don't have to fuck with the the you know valves you know the other ones have that bad for the for the smog on. man yeah. oh man nightmare mm-hmm. and uh, you know I just I couldn't enjoy them you know I just bought them really to kind of like play with I was like oh yeah this is cool and I was like oh I don't have any money and I I can't drive it I'm afraid of it yeah I really was afraid of it I know what you mean where Marco he, you know he's got a couple beaters. And I think that's the way well, to he's go. He's got a bunch of race cars, so everything's sort of a beater in that regard. But I mean, I think it, like his white one, you know, or whatever that one. Uh, oh, he sold it, but uh, I think it's for me to get one that runs great mm-hmm. and um, it, it has some dings and patina and stuff. And then I'm not like, oh. I mean, these cars that I was looking for all the time were mint. Oh, that's the wrong way. Mint. If you want to drive it, it's the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, 30,000 miles. But mint. if you're looking to collect it and right, like, right, you know, right. make money on it, and then it makes right. sense. I just, I'm a driver. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, uh, you know, it's to me, nothing ever stays. In, you know, like right now, I'm looking at getting a, just a Prius. It's, <laughs> I hear you. It's a different world now, totally. man. There's follow home robberies going on. Yep. And and I'm over. I'm on stage every night. I just want to do comedy yep. and go home and and chill. I don't want any trouble. I don't. I just a Prius, man. The freedom of that. I rented a Prius on a road trip, and I just parked it wherever. I wasn't like door dings or anything. I wasn't worried. I just pull don't in, care. go in the Seven Eleven, come out. Don't give a fuck. Yeah. I want that because. That's very appealing. Yeah, people don't uh, understand the, you know, door dings are just, they just open their doors. They, they don't give a fuck. Uh, regular people. Yeah, not right, car people. Right. Not yeah. car people. Yeah. Oh, the no. Kick, the, my favorite is the right. move, the kick it open move. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With yeah. the boot, you know, just fucking, uh, oh, my God. Yeah. It's don't even a, look. It's a rough, uh, it's rough to have anything nice these days. You just got to, uh, and I can't afford it, you know. I want to stay in the game of comedy. Mm-hmm. So, but if I got a lot of money, I still don't think I would get something because I just—it's just too much. It's a different world now in the last couple of years. Yeah, where people just follow you home and rob you. But you could do something all Mad Maxi too. Like that's where I go. I go. I, I like these guys who are like Farrah had that Safari one for a mm-hmm. while. I, I'm kind of digging all this sort of Mad Maxi shit. This overlanding Porsche. I love that car. Did he sell it? Uh, he was going to. I think. I don't know if he did or not. I, I think he might have. 
Um, I I love that. I would love to have a a nine six four full Baja out mm -hmm. like that and uh, painted in the Gulf, you know, Ford Gulf colors. Sure. That's me, man. The light blue and the light yeah, orange. Yeah, yeah, that's just, you know. You know, but like I said, also, I worship the 50-year anniversary of uh, the 9-11. That one, that's the bone-colored yeah. chalk yeah. with the houndstooth. The houndstooth seats. I'll take that. Yeah. That's just a classy. They made it that and the... Uh, and the, the two colors, yeah. Yeah, that dark gray. The, yeah, I don't like that, that Steve one. McQueen gray is. There. I like the other one. Yeah, but I like that McQueen gray, too. Yeah, know, I'm just cool saying, me, I, mean, I like... There's a color they got right now. That's the one I like, if you're talking about the cream one. It's called uh, Coffee Mocha. I love it. Oh, I man. I mean, I love it. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I think that's the color of Reggie's uh, uh, Tycon. That, that oh. Yeah, they, yeah. there's color. a few Tycons going around town right now. It's like they did a run of those in that color. I mean, I love it. Yeah. It you want to see really great cool. cars, you go to Erewhon on Sundays in Studio City. Where? Erewhon. It's the, the... The deli? That marketplace? Yeah. Oh, shit. Just everybody oh, coming God. in there. Right it's around like, the corner. Yeah, it's just like their parade. Like, here I come in my car. Sundays? Yeah, Sunday and Saturday. Just oh, go out there and eat a quesadilla and watch some insane cars. Maybe we will. Let's go do that sometime. Yeah. That'd be fun. I like looking at cars, um, and I like driving them. I just uh, haven't been able to really own one and feel okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's just too, uh, you know, I, like I said, if I get something, all of my money went into it. And then I go, if this gets hit, I have nothing. I don't know, man. There's, a, I mean, you probably don't know much about us, but that yellow car is ours. It's, ours isn't a Targa, but it's a, an 05997. It's yeah. all raced out thanks to uh, uh, TLG. Yeah. But like... We don't put the windows up on it. We oh, yeah. never, I mean, like, I accidentally different. left the key in it forever. I'm, if someone dings it, I don't care. The front is chipped up to yeah. fuck from racing and from driving on the crash. That's different, though. You know? But it was like a Concord winner six years ago. It had a windows out respray. The PCA yeah. loved it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we just said, ah, fuck it. If it gets dinged, who cares? Yeah. It's us now, you know? You know, Coco? It's our avatar. Coco over there at Sublime? Yeah, of course. Oh, man. I want to give him a shout out. I'll tell you. Coco's a sweetheart. I'll tell you how gold this guy is. I only knew him for about six months before COVID hit. I was living in Los Feliz, and I would stop by there all the time and just look at the cars mm -hmm. and, and just, you know. It's always a museum out front. Oh, just yeah. It's just, the <laughs> it's just the best. And when COVID hit, this fucking guy, this is how great of a guy he is. He brought me over groceries, food, and toilet paper. Like, I, wow. I only known this guy for like six months, and he called me. He goes, hey, are you okay? I go, man, I, 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 the grocery stores, are they open? He goes, I'm over at this place, and I'll pick up some stuff for you uh, over here. And, uh, you know, it was, he was over in uh, Atwater Village. And he came over, man, and he had, like, pork chops and vegetables and toilet paper. Everything we couldn't get. This fucking guy, yeah, man. And I was like, hey, this dude is a incredible human. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's beautiful. It's unreal. It's beautiful. I, lo I love it. I want more of that. I never, ever will forget this guy, you know? And, Shout man, does he... He works his ass off, that guy. Yeah. Holy shit. If you saw him, you would know him. You would remember him. The okay. tall guy, gray hair. I will it, now. That's he's an unreal. incredible yeah. story. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, that guy's a, a, an incredible... Uh, More people need to think like that, I think. If think. And yeah. TLG, great guys, too, yeah. man. Same thing. They great, treat us great, like family. Great guys, yeah. 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 There have yeah. been so many times they've helped us out, and I'm, oh. I'm so grateful to all of them. Unreal. It's so nice to be able to have... That's one of the things that makes allows us to be able to have that car too. Is yeah. that we have the peace of mind that you gotta there. have that. You know, it's if like, I had to figure every time something, whatever. Oh, I gotta I find know. a guy for that. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out for the I, same reason. You, I don't I want to. I, I can't know. be bothered. I don't want the trouble. I know, I know, and I love that uh, that that show that I can never pronounce. Lufa Goltz or whatever. Patrick Long was on the show the other day. The yeah. the, the, the founder of that. Oh, yeah, Lufa Goltz. Yeah. Lufa Goltz. Yeah. Yeah. 
The October best October this year. It's back in LA. Yeah, I'm on tour. The oh. best one though. <laughs> He's was, like, can't make it. <laughs> the best one was Universal Studios. Man. You like that one? Oh. No shit. That was the shit, dude. Really? Had you been to the other ones? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The like over on the west side at the you know, there was I've been all, uh like the fur the the three you know, there was that one that was kind of in those weird uh, warehouses and stuff. Where- Downtown, uh, yeah, yep. Modernica. The then where- there was the, the one that was place. kind of by the airport, Santa Monica Airport or whatever over there. What was that one? Was I don't like- know. Um, but there, we did one at the port because I worked that one, the port of Long Beach with all the breweries and everything. Right. It then what- in the morning. What and was then we the did other- one at a lumber yard. Yeah, that's the one I'm yeah, talking we about. Yeah, did that one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. It was like Torrance or something. Yeah, something weird. I don't, yeah. I don't remember. But I remember. Oh, so- you're right. It was right by the Torrance Airport. Right. I remember Seinfeld was there. Yep. Yeah, yep. but the I love the Universal Studios, man, because you know that what there's that one street where they had the Bajas up, and that's where the flood on the Universal right. a ride happens. In Little Mexico. Oh, it was fucking great. You just turn the corner in your Baja land, you know. Yeah. And then right around the corner is Jaws, right there. It's you truly know? little, yeah, yeah the little so. lake. <laughs> I love that show, man. That show is uh, bad news for me, though, because it got the because I was off cars for years. Yeah, I. I That's I, what gave you the bug again. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, no, I was into nine elevens, but once I got there, I was like, oh god. Yeah. Because before that, I've been motorcycle. I didn't own a car for twenty years or something. Just motorcycles. Rock and roll. Only motorcycles. I did most of my spots on a motorcycle. That's how you were getting around town. Yeah, it makes it, sense. Yeah, totally. But then, so you went to one of the Lufka Cult shows. Well, I went to said, a bunch, but it was that Universal Studios oh. one that I was just like, you know, they had the 914 era yeah. area. With that, all the race cars. And yeah, everything. and then they had the, you know, the Baja area, and I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah, man. And tell me about Gertrude here. How long have you had Gertrude? I got Gertrude during COVID. A fan gave her to me, and it was the greatest day ever. Uh, a fan? Shout out to Roseflower underscore Frenchies. Um, he knew that I loved French Bulldogs, and he reached out, and he said, Hey, I have occasionally I'll have a dog I want to rehome. And uh, would you be interested? I was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm touring all the time. I can't have a, can't dog. Have a dog. And then when COVID hit, he hit me up and I said, well, I don't think I'm ever working again. Because that's what it felt like the first month. <laughs> it truly felt like it was the end. No one's working. Well, There's I no might fir- never leave this house for the rest of my life. Yeah, well, it felt like there was never going to be public gatherings. Yeah. And so he called me, and I drove over there. I said, let me meet the dog. And I pulled up, and, and Gertie was out front. Her name wasn't Gertie at the time. Uh, her name was uh, Astre- Estrella, or Estrella, or Estrella. I guess that's uh, Spanish didn't, for the stars. Didn't even move an ear to that name, no. so. And then, ah! <laughs> yeah. She's like and then uh, I saw the dog, and I was like, oh, my God, I got a dog. So I went home. Took me a couple weeks to name her. Couldn't figure out what I wanted to name her. And then somebody was like, ah, she looks like E.T. Call her E.T. And I was like, oh, I was like E.T. And then I go, oh, no, Gertie from uh, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. Yeah. And I go, oh, yeah, Gertrude. <laughs> she stood on his desk. Yeah, so <laughs> that's what I, um, and I've had her for two years now. A month after I got her, Burr called me and goes, hey, we're going to go back out on the road. And do these uh, Texas tour outdoor shows. I go, oh shit, we're working. I just got Gertie. But I bring Gertie everywhere, man. On tour? Yeah, everywhere, man. No way. She's great, yeah. Uh, uh, in the cabin? In the yeah, I just, no, I, I, I put her inside a, a, a suitcase. <laughs> Sneak her on, no. No, no. She just goes right on, man. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, look how mellow she is. Oh, Ger- oh yeah, that Gertie. Incredibly mellow. She Such just a turned sweetie. six. Such a sweetie. Yeah, I love her. She changed my life, man. Really? Yeah, big you, time. Were, like, in what way? Well, it's, it's this dog, man. I just can't even imagine. I just love this dog, and she's gotten me to uh, kind of just... I work my ass off every day, but I slow down a little bit and enjoy just Gertie, just looking at her like, oh, the simplicity. Of that life? Yeah. To be yeah. thinking those thoughts. Yeah. Just like, I'm just chilling. Yeah. I'm like, how do you chill like that, dog? <laughs> you know? Ugh. Gertie. 
Well, they're a good breed for that, too. We had uh, Sean Lindauer had, um, uh, you know, Fajita's been here a few Fajita, times, too. Yeah. She's a Frenchie. And just a just such a good disposition on both of them. Yeah. Well, it's just like this, a little male version of this. Yeah. Well, you either get a super monster when it comes to French Bulldogs, or you get a mellow one. Oh, really? It's yeah. Po- they're polar. Well, you either get the backyard breeder weirdos that don't even care. They're just like, put this one with that one. Let's try to get a speckled colored $5,000, oh, no. $10,000 dog, you know? instead the experimenters. Of, yeah, instead of going with the, hey, these are primo bloodlines and, and mellow and no health problems, you know? And, uh, Hi, baby. Yeah. It's, it's a goodie, huh? Goodie. And then I think of the old days when those were Letterman's chairs. There'd probably been all sorts of exotic animals on them. Yeah. <laughs> when, oh, with yeah, Jack yeah. Hanna and yeah, lizards that guy and whatever was else. Yeah. Snakes and eagles yeah. and shit. Everything pissing and shitting all over the place. Yeah. Uh, were, you a, were you a talk show guy at any point? Like, you know, I grew up with this yeah. stuff, so I, I loved it. This was, this was my sports. Yeah, I love Letterman. Really? And I love Conan. And it was a dream to do Conan. I That's got to do Conan. Great. I, uh, it was just, I mean... I was asked to audition for The Tonight Show, and I didn't really have, uh, there was no, you know, to me, Johnny Carson was the king. And then after that, I didn't really like The Tonight Show. I I like the edgy dudes. Mm -hmm. So I was into Letterman and Conan. Mm -hmm. I like edgy, late night dudes. And I don't need the, you know, it's fine. Other people, I get it, middle America, they're into different stuff. They like it safe, but... So I was asked to do that, and I put together a set for a couple months, and I turned it in, and they said, well, we're all booked for this year, so we'll have you next year. And I go, well, I'm not going to be doing these jokes next year. (laughs) So I sent the tape over to uh, JP over at Conan, and I was in uh, Atlantic City with Burr, and I got off stage, and I got a call from him on a Friday night. And he goes, can you do Monday? Mm. And I just sent it in. I go, this Monday? And he goes, yeah. I go, oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> so I flew home immediately from Atlantic City and ran my set a bunch of times. And uh, at the Did store. Did you already have your set? I, well, like I'd you been already... working on it okay. for the Tonight Show. Right. This is like, oh, so it's the same set. Yeah, it, it, yeah, because it's the I. The one you sent them. Yeah, I okay. sent them, okay. and I had been working on it because it, it takes a long time to put together a good five. Mm-hmm. You think like, oh yeah, I'll do that. And then you start doing it, and you go like, oh yeah, this is, oh, this is no good. Oh, this is too long. Oh, this is too short. And is, a is, talk show five is different than than a club oh, five. Oh yeah, man, it's so hard. I think it's the hardest. And so once I got a good one, I just sent it to them. And then, um, you know, immediately I was, I couldn't even believe it. And so then I flew home and I did Conan and it was, you know, he was the first guy to put me on TV, man. You know, really? yeah, Conan O'Brien. And I, I never forget it. You know, I got wow. the cue cards at home framed. That's awesome. And okay. you were, that was when he was on the Warner Brothers lot, too. Oh, so, like, it's fancy it was a big Hollywood. deal. Yes. I, I, I showed up like a rapper, man. I had like eight people with me. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. My friends flew in. Oh, you know? that's hilarious. Oh, there was this bogus manager I had for about two minutes. He was there. <laughs> we well, got to bring the whole entourage. Oh, yeah. And then Burr came down, and it was great, man. Uh, and uh, You guys probably took over that little green room thing they made we had the whole little... back there yeah and yeah, then the, the massage chairs are. it was a comedy store night man it just happened to be it was Marin promoting glow it was uh burt kreischer promoting oh his brand new special God. and me doing stand-up Dude. so it was straight comedy store night With your friends i know that was what was That's amazing the... and then Thank the you. audience was comedy because you know you might be on with some disney uh, star or something, and you yeah. go out there and you're doing your jokes, and it's a bunch of moms out there, you know, brought their kids to watch the Disney star, and you're <laughs> just you about eating marijuana. a dick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're like legal weed. So it was just a, it was a perfect, perfect storm to have your friends there. To me, that's the big, oh yeah, that's the big get of like being able to do it with your buddies. Yeah, it's like it's a it's a lifetime goal achieved, but then. It's usually just you, and then you got to tell your friends about it. Oh, yeah. Maybe they're in the audience, maybe back. Oh yeah, they're like, "What was that like?" You know. Yeah. And and also, uh, Conan and those guys. There's just the whole crew over there. I I knew for years, mm-hmm. you know, because I would go with my friends. I went multiple times because I thought I'm going to be here one day, and I want to know the whole run. I want to know when you show up, 
you park how mu- how long to get there head. yeah i wanted to get it help, all ready help make it happen so then when i get there i'm not going to be like oh god where do we park oh, okay d- 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 i got to be there at four. Oh, and then you walk down this hall then there's the x you know i yeah. already knew i'm like i'm ready to go yes so all i had to do was thinking about the jokes that was great oh yeah. i love it uh conan was my first job in the business i was a senior in high school and oh. I, was, I worked on the first late night show the first year oh so great brutal oh yeah <laughs> yeah oh yeah that's the, the the take take it away tour yeah that's exactly what it yeah. was it was exactly what it was there was a point there where they were getting picked up by the week yeah, it was so insane and, and all of the nbc people because i was crew so i was on the crew side yeah and and they were all like all these old schoolers who worked on par and letterman and everything yeah. and they're all like this this sucker ain't gonna float. We're rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic here. It's just it's not gonna happen. It, Conan obviously proved them all wrong. Oh yeah. But it was pretty cool watching He's so that great. rise. I'll tell you a great thing. After I did Conan, uh the following week I was doing the LA forum with Burr. Oh. Yeah, and Burr This is the, all all of these highlights from your life in one short period of time. Yeah, it was great. Well, that was the first time I did the forum. Oh, excuse me. So <laughs> Burr, we got a uh, we got a, a music set gear down there, and we said let's play during the day in the LA Forum, and, and just rock, you know, because yes. Burr plays drums, I sing, and Conan came down and played, and he did like Creep, and uh, he's a big rockabilly guy, and he Bill was just ki- told this story on something. I don't watch a lot of Bill Burr, but he just yeah. told the story about how he was playing the <laughs> Forum or or the Madison Square Garden or something like that. Yeah, but he just rented it out for the day, so he got the drums, he got his friends. And yeah. everybody just rocked I out like they had that. a concert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's what we were doing. Before they did a concert. Yeah, it was great. I it was saw great. That was you. Yeah, and Conan came down. It was Amazing. insane. That's awesome. Yeah, he whipped out his strat that had like a million stickers on it. He's and... a way better musician than people know. Oh, he's killer. Yeah, yeah really he's killer. Good. Wow, that's amazing. You were part of that. That's cool. It sounded yeah. like a crazy night to be a part of. Oh, it was just great. I thought oh, that Oh, man. Too. Yeah. Rad. Yeah. Rad. Totally. I love that you have, uh, I mean, how many years did you say since you switched to comedy it's gonna be 13 at the end of the year it'll be full 13 13 years the things you've accomplished in 13 years are the things that somebody who's been doing it for like 30 years yeah i mean you know like i said i it's all i do good for you you know right on i i i I love you i want to get you out of here because it's time to go but like come back i will all right cool yeah man (laughs) please i think you're awesome yeah thanks uh uh, how do people follow you how do people keep in touch dean del rey.com tour dates merch everything and then instagram is dean del rey and del rey is d-e-l-r-a-y so dean del rey on all the socials it's all the same and then a big tour coming up 38 dates across america september ninth kicking off i think in philly and then we go to boston and then New York, two nights at the Beacon, and then we just go across the states. And then I pick up the end of the year with Bill Burr back on the arena tour. I think it's like Utah and uh, some other places. I don't know. I love it. All over the place. That's killer. Uh, And your podcasts are Let There Be Talk and The Grail, cactusradionetwork.com. Love it. Uh, Hey, Producer Mike, you got anything over here for Dean Del Rey? Uh, I've just been enjoying this very, very much. Uh, do I have anything? Good Lord. Dean, um, uh, uh, Mike is the host of the Letterman podcast and uh, producer of this show as well. The uh, Letterman podcast? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, he does that in like uh, like seasons, right? Oh, he. D- 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 this guy's the host. Uh, it's called the Letterman podcast. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Oh, I got you. We're trying to get Dave to do one. We are building a Letterman podcast network. That's actually true. We certainly Wait, are. Where does Letterman yeah. live? Connecticut? <laughs> he's in new york that's right. right i think he's got a few places yeah yeah he's he lives where he wants to live <laughs> yeah uh but mike's a big fan of comedy too great good shirt there dude fear of the black planet oh. one of the greatest records ever made that is exactly right that is in my top five of records of all time actually one of the <laughs> things i wanted to real. ask you <laughs> yeah. uh, uh one of the things i wanted to ask you because i'm a big music guy too i wanted to ask you if you're a faith no more fan what did he ask if you're a faith no more fan Oh, absolutely. Especially the Angel Dust record, I think, is yep. the, a masterpiece. Everybody's like, no, the one after that. No, once Jim's gone, I think it's over. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a little more forgiving than that, but I'll agree. Angel Dust is by far my favorite Faith No More record of all time. And it's my uh, it's tied with actually my number one uh, with Nine Inch Nails, The Fragile. As my Those are my two favorite albums of all time. Fear of a Black Planet is probably number four. 
Yeah, Mike Patton no is an absolute yep. genius in anything he does, and especially yep. he's got the uh, punk band going with um, with Dave Lombardo, and yeah, that shit Mr. is Bungo incredible. And, uh, they got a new record yeah. coming out. Yeah, absolutely. All of his stuff is so good. Tomahawk is amazing, and uh, Phantomas. Phantomas was amazing. Even the stuff he did with Dan the Automator, phenomenal as well. Um, he's a genius, yeah. man. He's an absolute genius. Uh, you're great people, man. I was just going to, Jay, the only thing I was going to say was the show is Cars and Comedy, and I don't know that you could have found a better balance of Cars and Comedy. This might be the greatest balance of the title of the show ever. <laughs> that worked out. Yeah. So thanks for doing Certainly. it. There yeah, you've uh, got thanks. that superlative. Thanks for having me. Uh, Dean Del Rey, everybody. You're done. All right. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thanks for hanging. <laughs> I, I love it. Quick. Gertrude, you're amazing. If you need the restroom or anything, yeah. it's over there by the green room. Help okay, yourself. Hold, hold it real yeah, quick. absolutely. It's <laughs> hilarious. It's hilarious. hilarious. This is good stuff. Yeah, you'll find it. Uh, let's see. Oh, he's in the closet. That's hilarious. Uh, follow the uh, natural light. There's a skylight in there. Uh, you are so cute, Gertie. This is adorable. This is um, a not so stupid pet trick. Uh. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I'll do some commercials. That's the easiest thing to do right now. <laughs> they say all which separates men and boys is the coverage for their toys. What types of toys are we talking about today, Mrs. Ryan? Collector stuff. That's right. <laughs> From automobiles to stamps to heavy equipment to your home or business, all of those things are insurable. Licensed in most states, St. Clair Insurance Shop's top provider, so you get the best coverage for your toys. Simply check them that bah. Simply check them out by going to www.coverageforyourtoys.com. Coverageforyourtoys.com. Coverageforyourtoys.com. And tell Jeff St. Clair that Nicole says hello because oftentimes with the MS, I cannot. She cannot. <laughs> uh, oh man, there was a lot of people in the chat here. Thank you, everybody. Here we go. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, dude. Thank I'll you. send you an email later. Okay, cool. I appreciate it, brother. Great to meet you guys. Talk you to you same. later. Come on, girl. They uh, No, we did that one. Series 1 Films is more than just films. They can set you up with effective marketing solutions like press releases on major news sites. They can scale your rank on Google and produce cinematic content for your automotive brand. Check them out by going to Series1Films.com. 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 And while you're there, tell Taylor that Nicole says hello because oftentimes... I can't. <laughs> um, I'll tell you this. I Excuse love me, having Jay? a guest show up during the show and then disappear during the show. Because yeah. then there's no small talk or anything after. Uh, yes, Mike, please. Uh, it says live video paused on the Instagram. Oh, did I do that by accident? Oh, I mean, I might have somewhere. Confirm your phone number. What the? <laughs> <laughs> it wants me to. It wants me to confirm my phone number. Oh no, I can't do that right now. Oh, well, it picked a heck of a time to ask. Yeah, it really did. All right. Well, yeah. It is what it is, right? <laughs> yeah. We'll just we'll just do nothing else important, and then we'll just wrap it up. Uh, that guy is awesome. I like him so much. Yeah, I'm, me too. Uh, one of the few people I would have liked to have chatted with a few minutes after the show. Uh, fascinating. I love somebody that did something for so long and then switched gears and then is that successful at it. That blows my mind. Yeah, I wasn't sure what to expect. He's really thorough. Gives me a lot of hope for like what we're doing to switch gears at whatever age, like Same. he said. Um, let's see. So, producer Mike, let's get all of us back in here and talk to you for a yes, second. Yes, sir. Because I neglected to mention on Thursday, and I, I, I felt terrible about it. Um, there was so much going on with uh, Patrick Long and I, whoever was here. I think it was Patrick Long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that I just I didn't talk to you enough, and I really wanted to talk about your episode that you put up on Friday. It's been up for a couple of days now. Uh, because yeah. you got a spectacular guest. Do you want to tell everybody who it is? Uh, thank you for that. And don't ever apologize about not talking about that, especially, uh, no, this is great. But yes, Tom's bone, Tom Bones Malone was on, and uh, we had a phenomenal conversation. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 too, was, you know, go low brass. I played the trombone in high school all the way really? up. Really? Um, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, when I when I when I reached out to Tom, I said, hey, by the way, just so you know, I'm still searching for seventh position. Uh, and he gets and, that and, reference. 
and of course he gets the reference because wow. he's you know but the guy is the thing about tom and and paul schaefer they're both uh geniuses in two completely different sides of music and i love that about them paul uh has the best ear out of many humans on the planet he's probably you know in the in the very 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 upper echelon tom understands but, but, theory of oh hmm. go ahead no no i don't mean to cut you off there i just i think what you're saying is 100 percent true but people may not know the balance that you're talking about most people i bet a lot of people don't know that paul schaefer really can't read music even <laughs> yeah because he's able to play anything from any time from anything in any key and anything whatever he's got that kind of a genius brain but when it yeah. comes to charts and looking at the arrangements for what all the instruments are and everything even though he can hear them all that's not his specialty but that's right back to mike here that's right <laughs> <laughs> uh tom yeah so so and paul has this memory that is just uh it, it's 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 insane like some people have a photographic memory paul's has to do with music it's but encyclopedic tom, though it's very much so yes and it's like the uh, don's database because everything's cross cross-referenced yes and and what tom can do is he can literally transpose music on the fly he can go from key to key and he understands the entire thing uh very and he actually even on the show uh, compared it to mathematics and it's oh, like, it is. Uh, yeah, very, very, at that level, it very much is. And, he, and he, uh, he, it just comes easy to him. Someone like Tom, who Tom also did all the arrangements on The Late Show um, uh, yeah. for, for, the, for the, the other musicians. But um, uh, he, he's able to say there's a chart and it's in B flat, whatever they're playing. But Paul wants to play it in some other key. He's able to then transpose it live, read oh. it here, play it here. Yep. That's a because skill. his because exactly because of the the awareness and the knowledge they they all have of their instrument. It's it's a mind blowing thing. The people the things that you don't know went into. Oh yeah, the band's playing. The band's yes. playing over there. Oh, here's another song from the band. And there are so many memories that he he shared with us on the show too about how, uh, you know, they pulled a gal in from a music store. Uh, she had a saxophone with her. Okay, well, what song do you know? and transposed it for the band, you know, literally while the show was, was, was happening live. around him and doing it live and with opera singers and things like that. Um, he's arranged over 3000 pieces of music and it's very cool. Uh, he came on the show and within the first 15 minutes, he truncated all of the things that I think, um, somebody would ask him, where did you meet Paul? Which is a very neat story because their careers crisscrossed a couple of times from Saturday Night Live. Uh, when Late Night started, Tom actually was the one that recommended Paul to head up the band. Tom was yep. actually asked about it. And yep. there's, there's some really cool things. He told And they all did the Blues the, Brothers together as well. And they did the Blues Brothers. And, and, and he told all of those stories very quickly. Um, which I'm, I'm, I'm super grateful for. So we could actually go a little bit deeper to get him and out of we the ended way. The episode talking with Warren Zevon, it was a, a really special, oh. special episode. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, it, it was, it was a really, really special episode. Uh, we've got Steve Weiner who, uh, was, uh, one of the original writers on late night. Uh, on, this week, he's Tom the guy Oliver. that came we, up with the, just, with now the we're glass just break. The show. I thought we were having a conversation. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jesus. brother. Now he's just plugging this other future guest. I want to talk more about Tom Malone because he's yeah, special yeah, to me. And forgive me, I'm making it about me for a second. But he's he's really special to me, and I'm so ad admiring of him because, you know, we know him from The Late Show, and that's all good and great. But as a kid in the Wilton High School, he came to our school to do that jazz symposium I told you about with Chris Brubeck, who had kids in the school system at the time. We were friends with his kids. Uh, uh, but it was him and uh, Chris Brubeck and Tom Malone and a handful of other musicians that Tom would remember, I'm sure. And they came and did this jazz symposium where this whole town, this was Letterman's town, by the way, I should mention. We're living in Letterman's town. So it, it, everything's Letterman-centric in 1993 when, when the, the changeover happened, right? So having a guy from the Letterman band at our high school doing this thing where the kids are then allowed to go play with the musician from the Letterman band, it was a very special thing time and thing for all of us not just me the letterman yeah. fan that doesn't happen no and and all of these guys it, they were so uh accomplished from i'm making the letterman connection because it was big at the time but obviously everything mike said they were all accomplished in their own uh rights and being many of them historical jazz mu musicians in the city you know lou soloff yeah. is not just 
from the Blues Brothers and all that other stuff, but he's the the Carnegie Hall Jazz Orchestra, and and I don't know, all those guys are so impressive to me. Um, the fact that they came to us as a kid, I think, I don't know, they're maybe even a little bit more. Like I put them on a pedestal. I put them. That's probably what it is. I put them on a pedestal because like he he he, we he deserves were here, to be they there. Were there, and then no matter what, you never catch yep. up to it. It's always. Sorry. Thanks for helping me work well, through that, Anytime you talk everybody. to a genius. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fun anytime you talk to a genius. Um, by the way, he just moved out to L.A. So what? I think we should get him on the playset. Yeah, yes! he just moved out to L.A. like recently. So oh, we should get him wow. on the playset. Uh, that would be incredible if you can help make that happen. Yep. I, uh, I, I think yep. he's got 5,000 friends on the Facebook, and I think I've been in that queue to be a friend for like years and years. I don't know him personally. I mean – Oh, the other thing was, and I ended up getting, because I completely skipped the part of why it's special to me, Lou Soloff from the Blood, Sweat, and Tears and his friend has passed away. He was my connection to all these guys. He, it was my aunt knew Paul Schaefer. She was best friends with uh, Lou Soloff. And that's how I had these connections as a kid. That's how I got into the freaking places in the first place. And Lou Soloff did my high school show when I, I was a kid. I was just going to say that he was the one in your show. Yes, and he took the t- – so you got one guy over here and then another guy in the, in the auditorium. and They were taking the time to, to, to uh, uh, whatever, to get us going. But um, Lou Soloff used to have these classic Halloween parties at his house every year. And Tom Malone was there every single year I ever went. You know what I mean? They were all t- – and Paul Schaefer was always there. It was, it was amazing. So I think that's – I was just at an impressionable age. Yeah. And you did really neat well, stuff. Just... I don't. I'm sorry. It became way too J centric. I apologize. I made it that way. I did it. I apologize. <laughs> this is why collectively no. we've all done stuff that people don't always get to do, and other people yep. have done other things. So it all washes out. I appreciate that. Michael Cosgrove says Dean That's Del Rey right. is the man. He totally carries the torch for rock. His podcast is a total treasure, and he's a great comic. Wow. Very nice. Nice praise. Um, all right. Absolutely. Now back back to you, Mike. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, you were pitching your thing your and then show. I went down mem- my own memory lane. It's your show. And, and I'm glad that I'm glad that uh, you did. I think those are great memories. And I can't wait. Like, this is the cool thing about this is us talking about this right now and just kind of uh, going back and forth on it. It's going to be really gratifying when he's there uh, in the chair. Uh, talking to you about these memories, that's going to be a lot of fun and circles will be complete at that point. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe, maybe you say, maybe that's, maybe that's what I was doing. Maybe I was just warming up, remembering the memories so that we could talk about him when he's here. I guess what my, my point to all of that was trying to say, what a giving, he wasn't just talented and successful. He was so effing giving of his time and, and knowledge and expertise and, uh, it's hard to describe. I'm not talking about a concert. I'm talking about an interactive experience where everybody could go up and, and spend time with these guys. It was really incredible. R.I.P. Lou Soloff, by the way. He was a super cool guy and wicked talented. Wicked talented. The trumpet, those high registers, just like Doc Severinsen, except better. He was even higher and better. If you hear any of that super high trumpet in the old Blood, Sweat, and Tears records, that's Lou. Awesome. I had no idea. Craig loved... Robinson loved the blood, blood, sweat, and tears. tears. Yeah, I didn't know Lou was ever part of them. Craig Robinson apparently likes three name bands because he loves Earth, Wind, and Fire, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. You know what? I think these are, these are these are bands that have pure soul, and I wouldn't classify them as soul music. But these bands and these musicians and these people have soul. They are sp- they're speaking their hearts to you. That's Every... him through and through. Yes, Craig Robinson. Yeah. Yes, speaks through his heart. We there was one uh, concert in whatever, <laughs> but we were dancing and he was like, "I'm a horrible dancer," but he just felt the rhythm everywhere we went. Yeah, he's uh, tuned into the frequencies. Yeah. Um, okay, so other good guests on the Letterman podcast coming up, or yes, that you've already, or that you've uh, already well, had. Steve Weiner uh, comes out on Friday. He's the guy that. Uh, the pencil with the glass. He's the guy that did that. Uh, that that came up with that gag originally on the original mailbag segment. Or that was his uh, idea. Mail segment. That was his idea. Yeah. So 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 legendary stuff right from the very beginning. Um, and then also had a, a really cool. Uh, Do you want to throw one of your career. pencils there? Why don't you throw one of your pencils there? 
Let's just see if well, it works. I mean, yeah. Let's just see if it works. Okay, ready? Yeah. Not bad. Not Pretty bad. good. Pretty good, man. Uh, we also talked about Robert Klein because he spent a lot of time working oh. for Robert Klein after Letterman. And it was neat to, con to he did a really cool job comparing because he's worked for two titans, right? Just in different different sides of, of entertainment. And he did a really cool job uh, talking about uh, working for these two guys and, 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 and some other things as well. Uh, tomorrow I, I, I converse with Gerard Mulligan and I think Steve wow. Young as well. Wow. And it looks, yeah. So that's, that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> I'm excited about that. Wow. Um, and then it looks Jerry like, Mulligan. uh, it looks like, um, I don't know if I should say this out loud. No, you know what? I'll say it out loud. Cause it, it, yeah, it looks like Sue Hum is about to come on the show here in the next really? couple of weeks as well. Yeah. Costume supervisor, Sue Hum. Yeah, the wardrobe. Um, gonna ask her Very everything cool. about Steve O'Donnell's cop uniforms all the way to Dave suits. There's there's lots of meat on that bone. That's, That's right. I love that. I love that little tidbit you got out there that she eventually gave him a cop suit. That was so cool. Yeah, I love that. Uh, yeah. Well, you're it's knocking it out of the park, man. I I think it's fantastic. You are definitely laying some wonderful brickwork for uh, you know. You're lay laying the pathway up to the house that we're building. So, uh. <laughs> oh, I hope so, man. And they're all so excited. Like, here's here's the cool part: the excitement that gets ignited in these folks that 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 are a family. They're undoubtedly a family with each other, all from different generations and 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 whatnot and vantage points. But there are so many of them that even off camera, they're talking about how they want. You, your phrase to get the band back together somehow, some way. Uh, they still love it so much. And even after all these years of, of, of Dave having shifted into the new medium that he's in, uh, they're all right and ready to be excited about this again. I have to say the things you are saying are very, very good for what we're working on. I mean, like, that's really great to hear considering we're going to, we're building a place for them all to, do something again <laughs> it makes it feel right yeah. you already know there's going to be a letterman podcast network how big it's going to be stay tuned yeah good <laughs> More stuff to come. Up. good stuff coming up good stuff coming up uh all right well let's wrap this thing up shall we yes because since the thing went off i got to tell you about the marconi i was down at the uh, marconi museum with uh, adam ferrara today shooting some uh, some some stuff some social media things we'll put up um it's going to be great the show is going to be great. Uh, we're fine tuning the, uh, the, the lineup and the schedule, but, um, and he'll be a new flyer out tomorrow that, that represents the show a little bit better. We'll be on it. <laughs> oh, good. No, it was, it didn't seem necessary at the time, but then people don't really understand what it is. And it looks just like a straight mic stand up show. And it's not that at all. We're doing a big uh, variety show for them. So, uh, but, but, but get your tickets. Um, I, I am aware of what the price of these tickets are. I had nothing to do with that. This whole thing started with, we, we thought we would be, the Marconi reached out to us to um, throw them a comedy show. And as we went down this, the road to create a comedy show, they decided that they wanted to throw us a fundraiser. <laughs> so um, that's why the ticket prices are what they are. Uh, a lot of them are sponsored buys, that type of thing. Uh, I'm aware, I wouldn't ask you all, hey, come to our thing, it's $5,000. Um, but, but, but they are selling. So obviously the Marconi knows what they're doing. And, um, if it is the type of thing that you can do and write off then do it and get your company to buy a table for God's sake, that's what yeah. we need. Um, and it's all a tax write off, which is nice. So that's good. But, uh, join us. Won't you nine, three Reggie Watts will be there. Adam Ferrar will be there. We will be there. Jan Karam will be there. Greg Grunberg will be there. Uh, producer Ariel will be there. Um, lots of other people and surprises. The desk and chairs will be there if you want to come see the old Letterman set, the original Letterman stuff in person. Uh, this will all be there. And we've got a really good show plan. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and it's a live show. We're actually not even planning on recording it. I mean, somebody may, but we're not doing this. It'll be different. It'll be like this, but it'll be live with the audience so that we're not divided by the cameras cool. or whatever this is a time to spend uh with there's going to be a silent auction there's going to be a, a raffle thing um and if if i have anything to do with it there will be a confetti cannon so um stay tuned there's going to be stuff for the next few weeks we're going to be talking about this because um it's all we're working on right now it's a huge undertaking it's a huge undertaking i don't know how they do a hundred something events a year at the marconi 
Monique responded to my social media and it's like, how do you have time? How do you have time? Yeah. Yeah. I can answer that because we didn't even get to say goodbye to her because she was stuck at her computer doing a conference call thing. So maybe she was online. <laughs> I love her. That, there's so much that goes into things like this. The whole Marconi family is pretty amazing. Uh, if you don't know them, definitely go down and check out the museum. We did stuff today in the, the original Keaton Batmobile and the original kit from Knight Rider, the show. And I don't mean like one of them. I mean the hero number one kit. Super cool. I was in the General Lee. I was in a DeLorean today. What a life. Um, <laughs> let's get out of here, shall we? Let's see. <laughs> Dean Del Rey. And we told you how to spell that. D-E-L-R-A-Y. Follow him. He is awesome. I am a fan. Uh, and Google him because you can watch that Conan segment we talked about. And maybe if I remember, I'll put it in the, uh, in the, in the you know, in the, look below. Look below right now. And if I remember it, it's there. Uh, check out Tom Bones Malone on the Letterman podcast. Uh, coming up this week, we've got what's his name? Steve Weiner. Steve Weiner. Um, we'll do the scratcher ticket another time. That was more of a time killer. And I think that's it. New Life of Old Nicole. Uh, the Letterman podcast up in Canada. Uh, I've got a bunch of them. I don't care where you follow. Porsche Life 111. <laughs> but I don't really use that. It's Cars and Comedy 111. That's who I am. Cars and Comedy 111. What a day. I know. I miss everybody on Instagram. I feel like I want to say goodbye to them, but they're gone. Uh, Producer Mike, thank you so much for everything up in Canada. Really, really appreciate your efforts always. I love you guys. It's a pleasure. <laughs> well, thanks for everything you do, keeping the Letterman spirit alive, too. I, I, I sh every time I exchange a, uh, a, a nicety with Rupert, he always mm. says something nice to that uh, extent, and I feel like you're really, really killing it with uh, – with everything you're doing with the keeping the letterman spirit alive so please keep doing it so that we can all keep doing it absolutely it's a all it's right. an honor <laughs> i love you we love you love we you. love dean del rey too we all love you at home and we'll be back on thursday what's going on tomorrow tomorrow we're not here yeah thursday thursday's vinnie russo from uh the smoking tire which will be good be really good uh vinnie russo is working over at the id agency and uh some other stuff as well He's also sort of overseeing the new West Side collector car storage location. So lots of good stuff with Vinnie Russo on Thursday. All right. Love, everybody. See you later. <laughs>